Good evening, everyone. This is Chris Cowan at the Bujikan Butoku Dojo in Fremont, California. This video has been a long time coming. I've been kind of hesitant to make it because I've been posting mostly about uh, our martial arts training content with the dojo. But there's another side that, of stuff that I do, which is graphic design. Studied art and uh, graphic design in college. Got a degree in it. It was great. Um, but I never quite used it did in a few jobs, but after a while, I started doing projects for other people. I wasn't happy doing it. Some people would just falter and not pay after you completed the project, or they would say, hey, this is a day late, and then not pay at all. And so I stopped making projects for other people. I stopped making costumes for other people. I would focus mostly on my children, making costumes for them. And that's what I've been doing. But one of the other things was our youngest son, uh, he had a project for school back in 2016. That project consisted of a list of words that he had to use in a paragraph. And one of the words that was in that list was ham. And he didn't know, you know, he asked me for help. He's like, Dad, I don't know what to write. You know, so I said, hey, let's, let's try and work something out. And with ham, I started thinking because of our, my martial art that I studied all my life, I started thinking, hmm, ninja. How about a pig who's a ninja? And then it spawned, it, you know, then it came up with how we got to give him a name. So we gave him the name Hiroshi Ham. Okay. That turned into a little short story. That little paragraph turned into a very short story. From there, that kind of inspired me back then. And I decided to write a whole story and eventually turn it into a book. So started in 2016 writing this out. And then in 2021, we actually got it published in April. And I was excited about it, but I never really talked about it. I posted about it on Facebook, things like that, but I never talked about it on YouTube or anything like that. But I'm going to get into a little bit more details about what my plans are with this character. Okay. So the first book was titled Hiroshi Ham, The Shinobi's Tale. Okay. Um, this is it right here. This is a copy of it right here. Okay. It's not very thick. You know, this is a children's book, okay? You can see the art on the front, you know, and then art on the back. Uh, I was able to get most of it done during the COVID lockdown because I was home all the time. So that's when I was just like, I buckled down and I just went at it, okay? The artwork is drawn by me, you know? So all illustrations are drawn by me. Uh, story completely written by me, okay? And, um... This is available on Amazon and is available on uh, Walmart. So if you go to Amazon.com or Walmart.com and you put in Hiroshi Ham, this book will come up and also maybe some Honey Baked Hams. You know, trust me, they'll, when you put ham in there, you're going to get some meat showing up, okay? Um, so these books are primarily for kids. I'm not trying to go for a particular age group. There is some content that is kind of um, in terms of the fighting with the character and stuff like that. He's, there's some bandits in this book and, you know, and he has to deal with those bandits and there's some ninja action going on in there, okay? Um, and it, this here is the first of six books that I'm gonna be writing and publishing. So like I said, this is the first one, Hiroshi Ham, A Shinobi's Tale, okay? So my second book and third book, well, it, the story spanned it just, it went on and on. So I said, you know what? Let's split the second book up into two. So the second book will be titled Hiroshi Ham, The Kunoichi's Knot. Okay? Part one and part two. Okay? There's a character that's in here that makes an escape at the end of the book. That character is then sought out in the second book. And so it's all about her, her character. Um, and Hiroshi Ham tries to find her. Okay. Um, that book, like I said, that book, I thought it'd be a very simple thing when I was writing it. And it just seemed like, oh, the story went on and on. And I was like, wait, I got to split this up in two. And then when I, when you actually do go out and write this out and then I do the storyboards, you know, for the, for the book, I go back and I look at it and I go, wait, how did that person know this? How did that person not know that? And then from there, you got to go back and write some more, do some more storyboards. So that's what I'm doing. So the second and third book are storyboarded out already. I am currently working on the backgrounds for all of the second book. So I'm a, right now currently illustrating up to page 85 for the backgrounds. 
What I'm doing is actually going through and illustrating the entire background of the book. Then I'm going back and drawing my characters in, okay? Originally what I did with the first book, I drew everything on cardstock, like you would see for like comic books, the comic book cardstock, okay? And then I would scan it in and hand paint it, you know, uh, with the gray tones, scan it in the computer and then color it in the computer. This one I'm doing 100% in the computer, okay? So I can cut that part out where I have to scan it each page and everything like that. And um, yeah, so it's just gonna make the, the process a lot easier to draw the characters actually in the background instead of, and using my storyboards as a guide, okay? Our next book after that we're gonna be looking is, we're gonna be doing is called The Legacy of Yasuke, okay? I don't know if many of you know who Yasuke, I know there's an animated, you know, uh, anime that was on Netflix, you know, it was horrible by the way. Um, and some might have heard, that, and there was going to be a movie that was going to be made about Yasuke uh, starring Chadwick Boseman, but unfortunately we lost him to cancer. Um, and I think it would have been a great movie. It would have been right up there, you know, with The Last Samurai. I think it would have been great. Great. But we're not going to get that. Uh, with the legacy of Yasuke, people know his history. People who know of him know his history up until the end of... Odu Nobunaga's reign, or not reign, his 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 time in, in in Japan. Up until that time, everyone knows that point right there. But no one knows what happened to Yasuke afterwards. This story will take place afterwards, um, and it will tell his legacy of 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 him. Okay, it will carry on, and it will carry on in Japan, which is going to be interesting. Okay. Um, the next one I have, the next book I, that, I, that I have in the planning here is uh, Hiroshi Ham, Home of the Brave. Okay, this should tell you something, Home of the Brave. We're looking at America here, okay. In this case, we're going to talk about Commodore William Perry coming to Japan with the, with the famous black ships and trying to get op Japan to open up for trade, okay. We're going to have some little things going on with that, Okay. Um, we're gonna have interesting concepts with some new characters, things in there too, and um, you know, it's gonna be pretty interesting. You know, some of you have seen on Facebook my my interpretation of Commodore uh, William Perry. Uh, I have him as a bear. Okay, so he's this, he's this big lumbering bear that comes in, you know, and demands that Japan open its uh, borders to trade. Okay, and we're gonna have some ninja stuff things going on in that one too. Okay. The last book in the series, uh, book six, will be called Shinobi Knights in the Edo. Okay, this will be a all-out battle in Edo, which is now Tokyo, and the battle will take place at night. And this is going to be an all-out ninja battle. Okay, it's going to be awesome. And what's going to be interesting is that all the ninja that are going to be fighting in this. Take, have to take in consideration not to wake the locals. So you're gonna have two ninja factions fighting and they're gonna have to be quiet and use stealth as they fight. Someone may knock something over but the other ninja will catch it and be like, oh, shh, kind of thing, right? So this is, this, this is gonna be um, very interesting. And what we're gonna, and how we're gonna end that, uh, that book, um, The Shinobi Knights in Edo, will be those two ninja factions coming together and saving Japan. Uh, we're going to look at a large, I don't want to say a large disaster, but something that will happen in Japan that will affect Edo and affect the surrounding areas of Edo. And those two ninja factions will have to work together to help and save people. So that's kind of like what's going on. And then from there, because you're going to have sort of a team from, from then on. And that team will then eventually leave Japan. So this series of books, hopefully I'm going to be around to finish writing all of these books. Because <laughs> I have them all outlined. And I, I have the basic plots down and everything. And the stories down and the characters. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. 
you know I'm looking forward to my 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 art style changing for the better taking advantage of new tools whether it's 3d design you know or you know 3d modeling things like that I used to do that back in the day when I, when I had a job at a video game company and um, I'm looking forward to it looking forward to it looking forward to the challenge okay um, the way I like to describe these books, I like to describe them as fluid fiction. I don't know if that's a word or something I just made up. I don't know. But basically, it's there's some non-fictional and fictional characters and events that will take place in this book. Okay? And also, the timeline in this book is going to jump around. So this Japanese timeline is going to be all over the place. Okay? Because you have characters that have been in one era, they're going to show up in another era. You know? Um, and it may seem strange, but it's just to try to, you know bring these characters into different environments, things like that, in different situations. Now, next, last but not least, one of the things that came up with Hiroshi Ham is when I drew this character, I have to imagine him because when I've created him, I have to imagine him in 3D, okay? 3D space to get all the angles. And one of the things that I was looking for was, I'm like, well, I, I seem to be getting it right when I'm drawing. But I said, you know what? I would love to have a maquette of my character. I went to different artists, that some some sculptors that were on Facebook, some on YouTube, and, and asked them, hey, what would it take to commission you to do a piece for me of my character? And I got a range between, okay, keep in mind, he's only, what, seven, eight inches tall, right? I was quoted between $400 to $700 for my character, okay? He's a little pig, ninja. I'm like, so... That to me was overpriced, and I was like, and I, but the people that you know, I don't want to take anything from from these artists. They do amazing work, but it was out of my price range. So I had sculpted it maybe once, maybe thirty years ago. Okay, I said, hey, let me just go try it again. So I bought the supplies for it. I bought the tools, and I decided to do it myself. And here's my maquette I made of Hiroshi Ham, okay? So one thing that's different was what the, those sculptors would have done was they would have made the clothes out of clay or sculpey, right? What I did is I sculpted Hiroshi Ham butt naked and made his armor and his waraji, his sandals here, okay? And once I made that, I scanned him in the 3D. Okay, then I went and I made his kimono and hakama. Okay, and his hood. Okay, I made those out of fabric. So this is a mixed medium sculpture. So you have Hiroshi Ham out of Sculpey and Super Sculpey. And then you have the clothes that I, I sewed, I glued. I did everything I could to build this together. Okay, now I'm going to put the book down here. Okay. So as you can see, if I turn him around, this gives me that 3D view of the character that I created, okay? So if we take a look, okay? So, now, originally, his Shinobu Katana that I was gonna give him was gonna be a larger one. I couldn't find one. So I got one from a figure that I got in Japan. It was a, it was a Samurai Iron Man, and he had a Katana on his hip. So. I went and took that and stuck him here because I couldn't find one. We're going to get him one that's going to be a longer one. It's going to fit correctly in size. So you can see his Hakama here. Okay. No, his Hakama here. Basically, we're trying to make it so it's like the Shinobi. Okay. All right. Behind him, he has a pouch that holds his tools. You know, maybe some uh, Mitsubishi, maybe some Shuriken, things like that. Behind him, we also have Kunai, two Kunai that I sculpted. Okay. Those are actually metal rings right there that I sculpted into it. On the other side of his hip, I have on a string, I have a little pouch. Maybe you can carry water, things like that in there. Okay, so it's all together, you know. Um, I've also uh, put wires inside of some of this. So as you can see, you know, hanging off, hanging off of this tinagui. You see that, you know, this flowing in the wind, things like that. Um, I even did the pleats. And it's Hakuma, as you can see, okay? So, this is my character of Hiroshi Ham that I, that I made, you know, for my reference. 
Now, when it looks at the cost of this, this piece of wood is a piece of wood that I just found in the backyard. You know, I think I spent maybe $40 on the supplies, you know, and maybe two weeks worth of work. And I've got the character that I came up with, designed and created. So you can do this too. Be creative with what you, with your ideas, you know, don't put limits on yourself and don't let someone else put limits on you, you know? So if you get a chance, write a book, write a story and publish it. Okay. I did, you know, I'm not getting rich off of it or anything like that, but it's part of my legacy. So make your own. Take care. Have a good night.